you found the Sharks Broadcast Podcast. Subscribe, and if you like what you hear, give us a five-star rating. Look like you're about to do something stupid. Don't be stupid. I have to say something stupid. Why is everyone so stupid? I know you think I'm stupid, don't you? Stupid is, stupid does, sir. You are a stupid, stupid man! Man, this is the opposite of stupid news. Uh Uh-huh. I'm telling you. 180 degrees in the other direction. Wow. Everybody ought to be like this guy. Uh, Craig Gordonier, he's out of Massachusetts and uh, Coast Guard vet, got out and had a plan, uh, you know, to have a business out in California. And, of course, you know, it's like many business deals and over the last years with the pandemic, it crashed. And then he just, you know, always dreamed of spending the rest of his retired life, you know, 65 years of age, uh, traveling the country and beyond in his own RV. Uh, so this thing happens, what, last May? He pretty much has to move back to Massachusetts. Into he, his parents' house. Yeah, and he says... A lot know, of people had to do that. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. He says to himself, all right, that whole retiring uh, at uh, 65 thing with the uh, travel in the world in an RV, let's, let's work on that right now. So this is in May. In, like, six months, he transforms this bus that uh, he got out of South Dakota into arguably... The most beautiful studio apartment I've ever seen. It's really beautiful. He had a budget of $40,000. He scoured Craigslist and other online places to find this bus. He finally found one, like you say, drove it back to Massachusetts. And him and his family worked within his budget to create this space that's absolutely gorgeous. It's unbelievable. He got a hand from his grandfather and his father. It's unreal. It's better than any uh, anything you see on any of those those channels where they do that. I mean, yeah. it's just I, I, this is a bus. I mean, it looks like you know, like uh, a, a million dollar uh, studio apartment in New York. Yep, and Craig is really an inspirational guy. You can follow him on Instagram, and here's part of his life mission: is to let others know that they can do it too. Every one of you built the life you're living, piece by piece. Decision by decision, you built your, you are exactly where you've built your life to be. And if you don't like it, okay, don't dwell on it, feel like a failure, have regrets, compare yourself to other people and get all down. Oh, I'm going to be not like, see the problem, find the solution and immediately start building the solution. Isn't that great? Yeah. Wow. If you want to see the bus and learn more about him, we've got all that information on the Shark app. I want to, like, run through a brick wall after that. It was just so inspiring. He's, he's got it down. <laughs> what do you mean, run through a brick just, wall? Just, you know, just, I just want to, you know, like a, oh. like, a fo- like a football player. I'm all psyched oh, up. Oh, you're like, you Woo! could just get right through that brick yeah, wall. Yeah, absolutely. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Stevie Winwood on the way next on the Shark. Are you? So we just heard about Craig, that guy who converted a bus, a school bus, into an awesome living space. And he did it with a $40,000 budget. The pandemic eliminated his job. And he decided, let's just cut 40 years out of my life plan and yeah. get this, convert this bus. An amazing story. Yeah, he's uh, he's 27. It's interesting because uh, a new, a new uh, study says that most people think that the best year of our lives, our peak year, is when we're 37. Aha. Uh-huh. But of those people... And this is the part that makes me very happy. Two-thirds say their best years are ahead of them. Uh, also, another uh, bunch of folks uh, think 46, around 46 is their peak year yeah. as well. So, uh, I mean, you know, so, that, you know, for the perspective of things, mm. I just, I listened to uh, Craig and his bus there. And oh, I, I know. I, and How I, inspirational is that? I just honestly. Feel, yeah, I just... <laughs> I just it's feel like great. your your peak uh, year or your peak day is just it's just right now, you know. Exactly, yeah. exactly. That's what I try and live my life by. Is your peak day is today? Yeah, because uh, it's a blank slate. That's why I really like getting up early. You know, it's still pretty early. There are people that are still sleeping, but if you get up early, super early in the morning, and you see that sky, it's a blank slate. You never know what's going to happen today. Yes, I know it. Every every day, uh, that is true. Yeah, the sunrise is just such a such a wonderful metaphor. Uh, I guess the majority are thinking of physical health when they're doing this, but uh, you know, forty six percent think uh, mental health uh, as well. And of course, you know, nutrition is a big concern to, to reach your peak years or to have your peak years wherever they may be. Right. Coming up, we got time for food. It's National Steak and Cheese, or is it Cheese Steak? 
There we go. Day today, the big debate continues. Oh, that'll improve uh, any any day right there. <laughs> we'll have more on that coming up. It's the Shark Morning Show with Sarah and A-Train. Are you Sarah in A-Train? Yeah, Facebook.com slash Shark Morning Show. I got the million-dollar question. Who makes the best cheesesteak? It is National Cheesesteak Day. Who makes the best? Uh, we've got some answers. Uh, Ron, thank you. He's I know Ron's in Brentwood. He says Lindy's in Brentwood oh, yeah. uh, makes the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've got uh, Noel says Riverbend in Dover, which, of course, That's that is one of our favorites. the Bob Fuller Media Center. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you did a poll of this building, <laughs> uh, yeah, Riverbend and Dover would definitely get to that. Now, in Goffstown... Mm. There's the Cheesesteak Factory, and uh, Ron says that that's the place to go. Uh, our our Shark VIP, Gary, he's going to Brooklyn. Oh, <laughs> come on, wow. Come on, Gary. Junior's Cheesesteak uh, there in Brooklyn. Now, uh, Randy, I know Randy, and he said Market Basket. Now, Randy, uh, you know, he knows how to blend the perfect uh, potato chip with a perfect sandwich. I, that, that's, that's his gig. He's uh, Utz. So oh, okay. uh, Randy says Market Basket makes a terrific uh, cheese steak. I did as not well. know that. Yeah, I didn't either. So this is uh, I, I had no clue. I know they make uh, great sandwiches there mm-hmm. at the Market Basket. I didn't know that was one of the options. But this is uh, you know it's like uh, discovery of cheesesteaks. I know one of the ones that I keep hearing about mm. is um, Newfields, the Shell Station. Oh yes, I that was on Chronicle, wasn't it? The yeah. other night on Channel Nine. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, everybody I talked to about that has been a mini obsession of mine. They're all oh, yeah, you gotta you gotta try that. Yeah. It's, it's it's a gas station. You know, you always the joke. Hey, from... sometimes the gas station food is really good. <laughs> I know. There's the candy at truck stop. Oh, right off exit three on one hundred and one. That's terrific. It's wicked good. The joke always was with Chevy Chase and the vacation movie. I'm hungry enough to eat uh, a sandwich from a gas station. Yeah. Well, that's some of the best. Uh, <laughs> some of the best steak and cheese. That's right. I gotta say, my my favorite. I mean, there's so many. Like you say, there's a place in Hampton. I forget the name of it. Uh, right off of Lafayette. Uh... Oh. Oh, uh, Jittos? Uh, no, no. Well, Jittos. they make oh, a yeah, really yeah. good one, too. Yeah, yeah. I always think that's Northampton. It's still Portsmouth. Yeah, uh, yeah the, but there's one in Hampton. Anyway, um, when I was a kid, it was Donnelly's in Nashua. Mm, it was okay. so good. Oh, my goodness. And they used to deliver to little uh, grocery stores in the neighborhood. So that's why how I got to know oh, Donnelly's because okay. my parents had the store on mm. Pine Street. So there you go. Chime in. Feel free to chime in. On National Cheesesteak Day, who makes the best? News is next on The Shark. Here's what's trending. Brain time now for the brain strain. Yes, it is. Got those ski passes, ski, uh, spring ski passes right now. And uh, this is an annoying brain strain. Uh, New England workers think that this is the most annoying characteristic of, of, a coworker. of their coworker, mm-hmm. <laughs> I wrote uh, personality trait, and I was like, "That's too long." So instead, I decided to uh, pause for about twenty minutes. <laughs> characteristic. That's a good one. Yeah, this yep. is the most annoying characteristic of their coworkers, according to almost all New Englanders. What yep. is it? Wow. What mm. do we What do we not like about our coworkers the most? I will tell you, it's not smelly food. Okay. It's not that. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't know if uh, we need to give hints right now. Okay, okay. But yeah, I was just saying it's not uh, being a know-it-all. It's not being a know-it-all. Nope. Although, so. although that can be annoying. That's not the number one thing nope. that New Englanders really dislike about their coworkers. Give it a shot. Eight seven seven forty five shark. That's eight seven seven four five seven forty two seventy five. Good luck. And it is the anniversary of. The trial of Pamela Smart. Unbelievable. Uh, 30 years. Wow. <laughs> I mean, when things happen. 30 years this month? Uh, yeah. It was, uh, wow. She was sentenced. My goodness. She was sentenced on uh, March 22nd. Uh, and I was just, so I've been in a bit of a, a Pamela Smart, like, uh, you know, what do they call History. it, rabbit hole? Yeah, I guess. Gotcha. Because I, I taped, um, like, Investigation Discovery's three-part documentary, which is really good. It had, uh, you know, all the local interviews here uh, with, you know, the police. And it, it, so I've been focusing on that. And I realized, I just, uh, you know, posted there in the Shark app, Shark 105.3, all these things that I forgot. And the thing that really stuck out to me is the jury, it was you know, a three-week trial, they could go, it was kind of like a nine to five thing, and then they could go home and watch all of the news coverage. Wow. Uh, <laughs> from their trial. Wow. You know, inside and outside every yeah. day. Usually with that type of thing, you know, you don't, you, you, 
you get sequestered so they don't have any kind of influence or whatever. But right. wow, they could completely immerse themselves in all sorts of uh, television programs. And that was the number one dominant story on every channel. Oh, my goodness. I wonder if they were asked not to watch TV or read the newspaper, yeah, though. Because I, I, I think that's the way it was done. I would think so. We'll just trust you. Go ahead and go yeah. ahead. <laughs> right? Go home to your family. And, and don't talk to anybody about it. Well, oh. I mean, I remember. So this sentencing happened on a Friday. And that weekend, I had uh, quite a bit going on that weekend. This is how big that thing was. So you remember all that stuff. And that's what everybody was talking about. Yeah. No matter where you went, went to the grocery store or the restaurant oh, yeah. I went to, that was it. 100% all the time. So I got, how can you be not be sequestered through that? Oh, but, I know. Uh, In case you don't remember, the, Pamela Smart was a library aide. She wasn't exactly a teacher. She was a paraprofessional at Winnicott High School. Yep. Um, and she had an affair with one of the students, and the student killed her husband, and the, these three boys were involved, and... It was just, oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. It, like you say, it was the talk of the town. I remember going to the Rockingham County Courthouse, which at that point was in Exeter. It's no longer there now, but it, yeah. it's on Hampton Road in yeah. Exeter, not far from Churchill's Garden Center. I think it's like Access Sports now. I cannot believe that you had things that you had to do, do like and get, part of yeah. your business mm-hmm. during that and that you couldn't get near that place. It was just, yeah. I mean, worldwide media coverage yep. right there in, in Exeter. Um, Court TV mm-hmm. became Court TV three months after that because, because of, because of the, the success of, you know, the ratings of that whole, uh, you know, media blitz. And then, uh, you know, she was portrayed by Helen Hunt. She was portrayed by Nicole Kidman loosely in another yeah. movie. Oh, this, that was big gosh. time stuff. You that, can... was, <laughs> yeah, it was unbelievable. So I just kind of went back. So yeah. yeah, read Aaron's blog right there at shark1053.com or on the Shark app. We've got the police coming up next. Are you Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. How to get 30, 30, how to get 30, how to get 20, 20, 20, how to get 20, 20, how to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month? So Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash save. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See detail. Uh, and A-Train, good morning to you. In case you missed it earlier today... Uh, we did a story about a Massachusetts man that converted an old school bus uh, into his dream home. And I'm telling you, this guy is unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, Craig Gordonier, you know, the pandemic hit. It's amazing how quick this turnaround was because mm. he was out in California, uh, you know, with his own business and uh, pandemic hits. He's got to move back home with his folks like many of us had to. And uh, he just thought to himself, all right, I got this retirement dream. Travel in the country in an awesome RV. Yep. And uh, at that point, here it is last May, and he said, let's do this. Finds a bus in South Dakota mm-hmm. and converts it into the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Inside. Oh. It's like it's like an apartment. It is yeah. incredible. He scoured the internet for the perfect vehicle, for the perfect school bus, and he found one in, um, where did you say it was? South, yeah, South Dakota. South Dakota, right. Drove it back to Massachusetts. His grandfather helped him do the renovations. His father helped. I mean, this guy is unbelievable. Former member of the U.S. Coast Guard, 27 years old, and he has transformed this thing into something that he could live in for literally the rest of his life. It's the place is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, it's fully the, paid for. It's the nicest looking apartment I've seen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's a it's the inside of a bus. Yep. He said he did splurge on a couple things, like a fireplace and an espresso bar. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, all the material is recycled material. Yeah, unreal. And uh, there was, you know, there's a lot of renovation, too, because the, the, um, he had to raise the roof to get a lot of this stuff in there, get that kind of space. Yeah, so I, think, to it. I think he actually found the bus, um, and they had done that with oh, this okay. particular bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew, I knew the roof was uh, was higher than normal. It's okay. unreal. Yeah. He can drive this thing anywhere he wants. I mean, we should really learn a lot from this guy. He, um, If you follow him on Instagram... Um, he's got a lot to say about your life and how, you know, it's never, it's never too late. Every one of you built the life you're living piece by piece, decision by decision. You built your, you are exactly where you've built your life to be. And if you don't like it, okay, 
Don't dwell on it, feel like a failure, have regrets, compare yourself to other people and get all down. Oh, I'm going to be not like see the problem, find the solution and immediately start building the solution. Unbelievable. There we go. Yep. Yeah. You almost hear like Survivor's Eye of the Tiger playing while he's talking. Right, right. right. <laughs> it's true. It gets you all fired up. You can see Craig's our, uh, school bus slash RV right there on the Shark app. News is next. On the set. Rolling. It was so fun talking to Steve Lukather the other day, wasn't it? Yeah. Steve, uh, Luke is, is something else. He's just so chill and uh, his whole life. You know, you think of like uh, the movie Forrest Gump and all the incredible uh, things that happened in Forrest Gump's oh, life. Oh, you're right. Forrest Gump's got, I mean, nothing on Luke. He's got it t- times 10. <laughs> I mean, his whole well, life they were is all, all made Hall up of with yeah. Forrest Gump. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you can check it out on the shark1053.com site or on the Shark app. Steve Lukather, of course, the lead singer and the only surviving member of Toto in the band currently. He has done so many project uh, projects. If you heard the other day, uh, you heard a little bit about what he's doing now. He's got some new music. He's in love. His girlfriend, Amber, Amber is by his side. But in the article that I wrote, there were a few things that I didn't know. I knew that he worked on Michael Jackson's Thriller album, mm-hmm. um, but I didn't know that he also played guitar on Beat It. Now, as we know, Eddie Van Halen did that you know, riff in Beat It. Yep. The classic sounding, you can hear it in your head. But Steve Lukather also played guitar on Beat It. He also did all the bass lines. Okay. I mean, come on. Yeah, so that makes sense. That entire band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, so that's him. I saw oh, wow. a, a documentary of him once that said basically he was, you know, Toto was Michael Jackson's, like, house band. Okay. <laughs> uh, during the Thriller album. Also, huh. on the uh, on the song Human Nature... He worked out those guitar parts right in the studio. There was no guitar in that song at all. Oh, wow. Until Luke was like, how does this song sound? And, you know, you can kind of hear it in your head. Dun, 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 dun. That's, that's yep. Steve Lukather. Unbelievable. Uh, the Tubes, he was, he, talk to you later. He co-wrote that tune with uh, Fee, the lead singer, Fee Waybill mm-hmm. of the Tubes. She's a beauty. <laughs> the Tubes, far and away, their biggest hit. And the rest of the band didn't want to play that song because they didn't write it. Huh? Oh, and it's interesting. it's probably made them so much money. Yeah. I mean, that that is the number one tune from them. Absolutely. Yep. He won a 1982 Grammy for Turn Your Love Around, George oh, Benson. Oh, yeah. That was a monster record. Absolutely. It was. It Turn was a- your love around. <laughs> yeah. And you have got to check out Los Lobotomies, which was Steve's band back in the day, Luke's band back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, but the most surprising, the one that nobody really knows that Steve Lukather does guitar, Olivia Newton-John's Physical. No, I never would have guessed that one. <laughs> Not in a million years. Unbelievable. Uh, huh. It's so funny. Uh, it's unreal. I mean, so. his, his cell phone must just go off all day long of these. Uh, hey, it's Quincy Jones. Oh, hey. <laughs> He's Olivia, worked with Olivia everybody. Newton-John. I know. You can check out the whole story right there on the Shark app. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? We're the Shark Morning Show with Sarah and A-Train, and it's time to play Who Are You? A fun and simple game. You pick a celebrity, give the other person three or more clues to figure out who that celebrity is. That's how you play. All this week, marching through March, I got military movies and the biggest stars from those military movies. This guy, very well-known actor, 46 years of age, actually born in Pennsylvania. Uh, Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, a township there. And uh, he, well, he made his breakthrough with a guest role in the TV series Sex and the City. Did this very well-known actor. But the uh, military movie that I'm asking for came out just in 2014. Um, it has the word American in it, and he, American soldier. Oh, close. He American um, sniper. Yeah. Um. Yes, he was the star of American Sniper. Mm. So we're narrowing the, that down. I going to say I first time I I've saw got him, Wesley Snipes in my head, but that's not it. Was he was the bad guy in Wedding Crashers? But I know him uh, as Phil in the movie The Hangover. <laughs> Which I think several times they called him Pretty Boy in that one, in The Hangover. 
which obviously it's uh, somebody who's not, pretty, not Ed, Ed Helms, and yeah. it's not uh, Alan, who is uh, mm. played by Zach Galifianakis. Yeah, and it's, and it's not the guy that's up on the roof. Uh, I was actually surprised that uh, he was in this when I when I look back. Uh, yeah, his. Uh, he, I mean, he's probably. I don't think he's one of America of uh, people's uh, most beautiful people, but he should be. You know, like the most handsome man ever. Yep. Uh, don't Bradley. Know. Bradley Cooper. Yep. Okay. Yeah, American Sniper. He co-produced that. That was directed by uh, Clint Eastwood. I should have said that. I did not know that. All right, there you go. Happy birthday today to this guy. He was born on March 24th, 1973 in Houston, Texas. He is an actor. Um, all kinds of awards. He was on Broadway in 2011 playing in a play called The Normal Heart. But mm. he was already famous by 2011. He is married to Todd Spiewak. I think I'm pronouncing his name probably incorrectly. Huh. But born and raised in Houston, oldest of two children. He's really known as one guy who is smarter than everybody. Uh, uh, okay. Yes, I know this guy. Uh, Dr. Sheldon Cooper is the character. Correct. Played by Jim Parsons. Jim Parsons, ladies and hey, gentlemen. Hey. That is correct. It's his birthday today. Uh-huh. Aww, happy birthday to Jim Parsons. I hope he has some uh, shredded chicken. Cubed, not shredded. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch his show, but I assume that's a reference to Big Bang Theory. <laughs> that's what they have every Wednesday night or oh, something. Yeah. All right, there you go. <laughs> if it's your birthday today, happy birthday to you, too. We've got Holland Oats coming up next on The Shark. Can guess what your favorite part of today was? <laughs> Try to read my mind. I'm, I'm Trying to massaging read my, mind. All my right. temples and staring right at you. New oh. places to get cheesesteak. Yes, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the local passion for cheesesteak has been uh, above and beyond. Thank you very much, Shark Nation. <laughs> Where are you going to go? Out of oh. all the ones that have been suggested, you know it's funny. I I, I love uh, I love Stratford just just over the way. I think I might get a Stratford today. Stratford House Pizza. Right. They make right. a good cheesesteak. They yes. do. It's that Philly Philadelphia style with the shaved steak. Okay, yes. that's pretty good. You can chime in as well. <laughs> My favorite part of today, geez, I don't know. You know, I think it was that guy Craig who converted the school bus into a living space. He had a budget of forty thousand dollars, and he's very inspirational. That guy, absolutely. I mean, he had this dream for his retirement, and uh, forty years ahead of time. It's awesome. Yeah, the workday kickoff is next. It's commercial free, classic hits, no interruption, no commercials. Billy Ocean kicks that off next. It's a Shark Morning Show with Sarah and A Train. Wow, I can't.